Hey, what is up guys? It's Brewers of Steel here and welcome back to another broadcast video and I am joined again with Canadian New Yorker. What is up? Hello, what's up everybody? Alright, so today's broadcast is me and my friend Canadian New Yorker here are going to be talking about um, how mental issues, my like health, how uh, mental health issues can affect us and stuff like that. So I guess I'll start off to saying that I guess I can start off and say that mental issues is a serious thing. And, you know, I think the number one thing that affects us with mental health issue is suicide. Um, I don't usually tell people this, but I actually had a friend. So I went to Boston for a year and I actually went to school there for a year. And I actually had a friend there that I made, like I made friends with him and we talked and um, he actually had the nerve because I was like the only closest friend that I had to it was to him, like the closest friend that I was um, to him. So he um, said to me that he was dealing with a lot of men mental um, health issues, and he told me that um, it was really hard to conquer. And then midway through the semester, um, he actually um, texted me saying that he wanted to kill himself and stuff like that. And then I had like a one hour talk with them saying that, you know, you know, it looks like, you know, it looks like that, you know, the world is going to end, but, you know, you still have a bright future. And then, you know, there's a lot of beautiful stuff in life and you can't just take away your life away like that. And, you know, I agreed with them saying that mental health issues and depression is serious, but like I, w I told my friend that he can always find counseling and stuff like that. So um, I think like, you know, mental health issues is a serious thing. Um, that's the whole reason why Robin Williams killed himself because, you know, he was one of the best actors I've seen. Like, he was a comedy. He played Genie in Aladdin. And, you know, being a, um actress, actor can be really stressful. And I, I can't blame for, you know, people going under stress, depression. And that's why Robin Williams killed himself because he was dealing with mental issues. So that's just my opinion. Um, we're going to talk about a few things. So, what are your thoughts on like health, mental health issues? Um, I, I think mental health issues are really it's a really serious thing, and people people do suffer from it. And we look at um, like some famous people out there uh, in the world. Uh, I mean, there's countless people who suffer from mental health and mental health issues, and oftentimes mental health is it's undetectable. Um, it's uh, it can be hard to track it down and understand where a person is coming from because uh, I've I've never um, experienced as as you have, Jeff. You know, where you have a friend who who's going through mental health issues and they stay all of a sudden up and you know, kill themselves for no reason. Um, it's a very serious thing. Uh, it's not talked about enough in this country. Um, it's uh, something that a lot of people like to ignore. Um, pe pe people suffer from mental health issues from, for, different, for a variety of different reasons. Um, that's all I can say. Yeah, um, so, so, yeah, it's that serious, and, um, now I want to talk about a few, um, mental health issue, um, events that happen. So, obviously, talk about Robin Williams, that was years ago, he killed himself because he was dealing with health issues, and, um, obviously, I want to talk about, um, tennis, the tennis world, so, um, for those who are watching, I am a tennis player. I do watch tennis and, you know, all of the people out of there, I probably would under, I definitely would understand why tennis players can go through a lot of depression and stuff because um, I, I wouldn't say that I was dealing with depression, but, um, you know, with all the, you know, tennis playing and stuff, I've dealt with like only once in my life that I've been playing tennis that I went over some depression while playing tennis because maybe you, I lost matches, you know, in the past. Um, but Naomi Osaka, uh, Naomi Osaka is the highest paid um, 
player right now, and she's from Japan. Those who don't know tennis, she's actually from Japan, and she's the world number three, I believe, right now. I don't remember, but she was number one for a bit um, until Ash Barty took over. And um, um, she's the most high-paid athlete um, right now, currently. And um, so there's four Grand Slams. There's Australian Open, French Open, Wimbledon, and the U.S. Open that just ended. So at the French Open, she was dealing with a lot of depression, like health issues. And um, she told the um, tournament media that she won't be attending the post-game you know, post game interviews because she was dealing with stress and depression. So she played her first round match and the tournament um, warned her saying that, oh, we're going to sue you. No, not wouldn't say sue, but like she, the tournament told her that, oh, we're going to find you and suspend you if you don't attend the, um, you know, the media, the post game media thing interview. And she's like, I already told you guys that I'm not gonna do the um, post game video, uh, post game interviews because I was dealing with depression and health issues. So as a result, because she didn't want to get fined or suspended, she withdrew from the French Open after the first round. So she, it was a walkover, and she's like, "I'm sorry to say this, but I specifically told the media that I wasn't gonna extend the post game interview because I was dealing with depression, and the tournament threatened to fine me and um, suspend me." Just because I don't, I'm going through a depression, and yeah, she um, at this really time since then she hasn't participated in any tournaments because she's been going through depression, um, and a lot of fans were with her, like supporting her, um, because you know health issue help people with depression and health issues the serious thing. So fans were all over her tweet, uh, Twitter after tweeting supporting her, um, fellow. Tennis players supported her. People from the NFL supported her, like Tom Brady put out a tweet to Naomi Osaka supporting her, saying that, you know, to recover, um, best of well, I'm so sad about your depression. You know, people in the NBA as well tweeted her. So it's been a big thing. So what do you think about this Naomi Osaka situation that I just explained? I think that Naomi Osaka's um, case is, uh, how can I put it? It's not, it's not normal. Um, I, this is the first K recorded case where um, Naomi Osaka uh, was questioned, asked questions by reporters at the French Open, and um, she wasn't said she wasn't comfortable with it. And then she went forward and she went to the U.S. Open and she was questioned by reporters again. And then when she, when she, when she was questioned by them, uh, she, she broke down. She, a um, time. Sorry, she skipped. French, she skipped after her first. She quit after her first round match at the French Open, and she um, skipped Wimbledon and then and she skipped the U.S. Open. And now a small tournament. Yes, well, what happened? Uh, a small she tournament would, actually, uh, sorry, that I wasn't finished, but uh, after the U.S. Open, um, people are seeing Naomi Osaka has, is going to be back in tennis, but she's still saying that she's going over depression. But the tournament put her name down for a main draw on the woman's side of, I think it's Indian Wells. So, okay, so, so, so just to get, our, get the idea straight, so the health is, we know mental health as a, emotional, psychological, and social well-being. It affects how we think, feel, and act, and uh, how we handle stress, relate to others, and make choices. So that's that's the definition of it. And, um, you know, I thought to myself when I listened to um, you know, Osaka and what happened to her, I think in the French Open, she was, she was, um, um, she lost the match, right? In the French Open, right? No, she won. She won the first round, and then after that, she quit because the um, tournament threatened to sue, uh, not sue her. Why do I keep? Did she get sued? Oh, they fined her. No, um, but like she she, got, the tournament threatened to find her and um, yeah, suspend her she because fine. she wasn't um, she wasn't um, attending the um, post game interviews. Yes, and she got she got fined. Um, on the post game for not for not attending the post game and, yeah. and she got fined fifty thousand dollars and uh, I think that you know she talked about her mental health issues and uh, but she never was really really um, 
specific about what that what what type of mental health it was. Um, you know, she just said she wasn't feeling comfortable with talking to the media. Was it um, anxiety? You know, um, you know, she she. In, to my, in, in my experience, I've never quite seen something like this happen before, uh, where athletes are in the spotlight and they're expected to talk about what, they, what about the tennis match. And um, reporters asking her about that, and you know, she talks about her depression. But she, you said, Jack, that you know, she's one of the highest paid athletes, tennis athletes in in in, in tennis. I just checked, I checked her her net worth. She's worth twenty five million dollars. Um, that's her net worth. She's one of the highest paid athletes in tennis, and um, apparently, she doesn't like, you know, to talk with the media about um, how her performance was. And uh, you know, for what I'm for what I'm seeing, yeah, you know, maybe probably she's been a lot, gone through a lot. Um, at the same time, I see that um, there's there seems to be a lot of um, in the sports world. There seems to be a lot of um, sense of entitlement among athletes nowadays that we've never really seen quite before in the age of sports. Um, you know, uh, that's just something that yeah that uh, that that I'm seeing from my personal point of view. And um, I don't know if Naomi Osaka is suffering from depression, as we say, you know, because I, 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 I see that somebody, if somebody is suffering from depression, is so rich and famous, you know, yeah, it's, of course, people can, can go through that. They can suffer from depression while they're being rich and famous. But at the same time, you know, I think that, uh, it's uh, it's 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 really it's 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 obviously a deeper issue that, that that's going. It's something. There's, there's a deeper issue going on here about uh, why Naomi Osaka says she's suffering from depression, but then when I when I look at what she's, I look at her actions. You know, she said she's suffering from depression, but but then she goes around and does something else. Much like unlike unlike Robin Williams. You know who, by the way, has you know we we know what happened to him. Yeah, he um, killed himself. He killed himself due to mental issues and depression. Yeah, his case is more a more serious thing. Um, you know, nobody knew that Robin Williams was going through so much uh, because he was he really put himself. He put he emptied himself into his movies and to become those legendary characters that we know of that, that um robin hood um uh, the um uh, i forget that some of the other movies he made um you know all those movies he made he emptied himself into those characters he put him 100 percent of himself but when i'm looking at what what's going on with with the sports athletes um it's it. It really looks like it's 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 something different. It's a little bit different than that. So yeah. Um. So going back to another um situation in the tennis world is Sloane Stevens lost one of her match. I believe it was the U.S. Open. Yeah, U.S. Open, and people just went after her. And you had your own perspective on this, so. So basically, Slow Stevens lost her match, and a lot of people, she told me that she had like dozens of dozens of tweets that went after her, calling her, it's really, really um, offensive. And I'm actually trying to find um, the pictures of those tweets. It's um, really, really offensive and really disturbing um, tweets made by fans saying that, um, sorry for my language, guys, if you're watching this, so... She, um, I'm going to see, oh yeah, here it is, I found them. So I, I did, um, um, I'm actually going to show you guys this, so I will warn you, it will be a little disturbing to see these tweets, so let me, um, is there a way I can share my screen? So share screen, 
Um, let me go here. Um, so basically, this says this is on Facebook. This is basically what I sent. Um, hopefully, you guys are can see this. Um, I don't know if you guys can. Wait, hang on, give me a second. Um, give me a second. Uh, this is shoot. I just lost it. But uh, give me a sec. Stop sharing. Um, nope, that's not. Stop streaming. Um, damn, I lost it. Um, let me see if I can get it back. It's gonna be a while. But if, let me just scroll up. Um, this is one of the pictures that I sent you, so I'm just gonna scroll up. But basically, um, I'm gonna bring it up again in a minute. But basically, Stowe Stevens lost at U.S. Open, and you know, fans were going after her, making threats, making death threats. It was really disturbing. And you know, she would. I'm surprised that she didn't go through a lot of depression after, because you know, millions of people were uh, going after her with me tweets and stuff saying that, oh, you can't play tennis for shit and stuff like that. And um, I'm surprised. I don't know if she was dealing with health issues or depression after, but it turns out she was a little bit, but um, she said that it was really, really disrespectful. And um, she said she dealt with it before. She have gotten like threats before. And then, you know, all she does is like, Oh, I, it's not really worth getting depressed, you know, and it's like, if I see something mean tweeted to me, I'll just think about those people who support me. Like for me, for like, for my message for your, any of you guys, like who sent out the mean tweets to Stowe Stevens, like I play tennis and I know where Stowe Stevens come from. Like, like she, 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 you do much as you can to play tennis and win your match, but yet people are about her because she... I don't know, maybe because she lost an easy match or something. So, like, all you guys that made me tweets to her, like, try playing tennis for once in your life and see what it's like. Because I know what it's like, so I can see deep down what's it like to be in slow Steven's shoes as a tennis player. So, for those people who made threats like that, that's just, like, childish and, like, unacceptable. And um, it wasn't clear if Slow Stevens was dealing with mental issues or anything like that during her match or after people started to threaten her. Um, so here, here, let me share my screen again. So this is basically, like I said, I just want to warn you guys, this is disturbing a little bit. If you guys are uncomfortable, feel free to skip a couple minutes after this. So, um, um, so basically, this is what she said. It's kind of hard to hear. It's kind of, so excuse my language, like I said, it's the language, The war, you guys are warned, the language is strong. So this person said, you fucking cunt of a whore pig, up 15-14 in the third set, and not only do you break her, you fucking whore of a monkey. Like, this person can't even spell, I don't even know what he's saying, but you lose the next two serve and lose the whole fucking set, you twat. I hope you get fucking A, I, I hope you get fucking A. I hope you, you get your fucking ass raped over and over again and die bleeding out of your asshole, you fucking cunt of a cock fucking bitch whore cunt. Like, this is just absolute horrible. And he said, how about less time posing for pictures like a fucking slut and more time practicing, you fucking cunt. Can't win on a serve to save your fucking life, you dirty whore. Please like this cunt so she can get kidnapped and get raped in the ass. And the, the, the next one basically says... Um, I promise to find you and destroy your legs so hard that you can't walk anymore. At so Stevens, fixer and corruption like you must be banned forever in jail. I hope you enjoy your last moments on court today. And there's basically a person that's, um, I don't know if, yeah, I'm not showing yet, but yeah, that's pretty much what I witnessed. So there's only three tweets. So it's that disturbing. She probably didn't like share a lot of tweets, like other di disturbing, like, I apologize for my language, but that's what it said. So, what are your thoughts on this? Wait, 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 wait a second. I can't hear you. Sorry, I muted myself. Uh, Sorry, yeah, I yeah. was saying that uh, no one should have to go through that kind of abuse and uh, to be verbally bullied online. To uh, honestly, we're all adults here. No one should have to go through cyberbullying. No one should have to be cyberbullied. 
Um, just because they are tennis players, because they did they, they they did terrible in a tennis match. Um, honestly, um, th those are extreme cases, and um, th those we see ca we see, we see cases of that every day. Uh, people people go through that, go through cyberbullying, they go through horrible um, experiences. People are just uh, going on and on and just pushing their buttons until they just can't take it anymore. And uh, honestly, seeing seeing that stuff and hearing that stuff on, on Twitter is just terrible. No one should have to go through that. Um, honestly, that, that that's terrible. But however, uh, I, I see that there are cases uh, where where um, people want the athlete to succeed and be successful, um, and people aren't gonna aren't going to uh, try to push to push to, to, to push to take it to that extreme and, and verbally attack a person because of, of of what they did and 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 who they are. You know that's that shouldn't happen to anyone. People criticize. People criticize athletes because they want their favorite athletes to improve, to be more, to be better than who they actually are. And, you know, there are, there are cases where there are, there are people who've gone through that, like uh, Patrick Ewing and the New York Knicks. Uh, they, the New York Knicks especially, um, Patrick Ewing went through a lot of that, um, where the, they, the, they fought with the... Uh, the fans were critical of the New York Knicks to push them to get to, to become better, better uh, sports team. Um, honestly, when people when 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 athletes are doing bad in sports, that's when people become critical of the athletes, their favorite sports athletes, because they want their sport the the sports athletes to be successful, um, and um, and so they want to push them to be successful and and. Oftentimes, athletes have to accept that as uh, as 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 athletes because you know we're not there. They worked hard to get there, and um, they're not there for the sake of being there. They're there because they want to be successful to make to become Hall of Fame um, potential. And uh, athletes have good good years and bad years. And and, and a prime example of that is I can think of is. Uh, 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 Kobe Bryant, you know, Kobe, when he was, I saw, I've seen Kobe play his whole year. I see, I saw, I saw Kobe play all his years. Kobe, when he was, uh, when he first came into the league and Kobe, when he went through the sexual allegation, uh, the news, the news media was all over him. Uh, they were trying to cover this case to try to figure out, well, did he rape, did he rape the, you know, the, the woman and his marriage was going through a lot of, uh, uh, he was going through marital, marital issues, and um, but he overcame that, and he became successful later on in his life. You know, um, a lot of a lot of athletes go through that. Um, but Sloan Stevens, uh, uh, I'm not really familiar with her, but you know, to see her go through that and people are verbally attacking her, you know, that that that's that's not that that shouldn't be happening. Um, but and, Stone um, Stevens, she, yeah, and like I said, I know what she goes through because I'm play tennis myself, and I can see myself in her shoes, and I can know what she's dealing with because she's over with all the stress playing tennis. And when I play, I go like when you play any sports, I think it like kind of like affects your um personality and stuff. Like um, hockey's stressful. I think every single sport out there is stressful. And like I said, I know what Sloan Stevens, like like I said to you before, I'm not really a big fan of Sloan Stevens. Not like I don't like her or anything, but I don't really watch her play tennis a lot. Like I played her, I watch her play, but like I'm not really a big fan. Like I don't really, not really interested in her play style. It's not like I don't like her as a person, but like what she's been going through with all that, I can't imagine what it's, what it's like for her maybe like oh she's going for depression after or people attack her but like it's not like i don't like her i just don't really like her play style of tennis like in tennis there's just st different style of play and like i'm just not a big fan of her um tennis style so but she but like i said um my 100 percent um my i'm 100 percent supportive of her um you know 
I just feel mental issues a huge thing, and for her to go through that, it's just unbelievable childish to like attack her like that. And you know, she just got to be strong and then just move on with tennis. So, and I just want to mention that people were saying that I don't know if they're turning this into a case, but they're saying that the people they're turning this to a race thing because Flo Steven is black, and people are saying that um like. She told me, she, Slow Stevens made a tweet saying that there was a tweet saying that someone saying that, oh, you're black, you can't play tennis for shit. Um, why don't you quit? Which was really racist. So, like, there are actually people investigating to see if this was a color or race thing. What do you think? I think that's that's a lot of that. that that's 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 ridiculous. That's ridiculous. Sloan Stevens is a black woman, okay? The most successful tennis player I know of that's a black woman are uh, Venus Williams and Serena Williams. Those are the two most successful black yes. women in tennis right now. Yeah, and that's okay? why they're and, making and, that's why they're making a movie out of those two because they've been the most successful black woman ten in, in tennis player. They're actually making a real life movie with Serena and Venus, like fake like actors. That's but, that's but um, that's that's. that's yeah. That's great, but I, I think that, you know, for, for them to just to say, oh, she's a black woman, um, she's, she's terrible, um, and then they call it racist, you know, that's just ridiculous because Venus Williams and Serena Williams are black women and they're pretty successful as yeah, black the women. Thing is, um, yeah, the so, thing is, so, so, Serena, so, like, Serena that, is well known. Like, yeah, so Serena Williams is well known for a temper issue on the court and. Trust me, I have seen so many nasty comments towards Serena Williams as well about her temper on the court. Like 2009 finals against Kim Clijsters, she threatened to kill a um, line judge because the line judge called a football um, on Serena Williams and Serena Williams was outraged. Like she threatened to kill a line judge and she just had a temper issue and she went ham and then um, the... Um, what do you call that person? The person who was in charge of calling the line in and out. The judge, the judge had to bring out like the, the 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 judge had to bring out the um tennis officials out, and then they got into a huge fight with Rita, and being down, and then they basically made. Um, basically, Serena Williams was disqualified because she threatened the um, line judge. And um, two thousand eighteen, I believe it was, Serena Williams also got into a temper issue ish um fight with the judge this time instead of threatening a um line dodge she threatened like the actual like official like who were who was officially in the match um off of a call i don't remember and then he said that you have no respect to a woman this is what she told to the judge person in charge she said you have no respect towards women and you know i'm about to shove this ball up down your throat she said that to a wwe not wwe what the fuck um a tennis <laughs> official um i watched too much we sorry guys but she said that to a tennis official like you have no respect for women and i'm literally about to shove this tennis ball down your throat and because of that they adopted the game from her like instead of competing him she just automatically loses the game like say that we're tied 2-2 right and i get into the fight she basically gives the other player a game for free so it's 3-2 without needing to play that's what happened and then later on she got like um disqualified again and people were criticizing yeah. and making threats on twitter after that too as well you know you know, you know what i think about twitter it's a cesspool of negativity. It's what it is. People, who, who uses, nobody, nobody really uses Twitter nowadays. I don't use Twitter. Because Twitter is, I don't use Twitter. I, I, I used to use Twitter. I used to kind of be into Twitter, but then I deleted Twitter. Twitter is a cesspool of negativity. You know, whoever uses Twitter, Twitter is irrelevant nowadays. Doesn't make sense to have Twitter. Um, so, so what I think about Twitter, Twitter, Twitter is nonsense. And, yeah, and, and, and for me, wasn't, like, wasn't Serena, was, 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 was Serena Williams' match against, wasn't that Serena Williams' match against Naomi Osaka that you're talking about? Yeah, 2018, yeah, thanks. It was against Naomi Osaka. Um, well, she didn't get disqualified. She was, like, because of her actions against a um, WWE, uh, what the fuck, um, a tennis official, um, she was deducted the game. So basically, imagine that I got into, like, we're playing, right? And um, we're tied at two all, 
a piece and I get into a fight, basically the judge gave the other, like, you a free game, so it's 3-2 without playing tennis. It's just absolutely ridiculous. Um, but I I liked Serena Williams back in the day, but after the shit she pulled in 2009 and 2018, I just lost all respect for her. Like, her temper issues was just so disrespectful, and you know, I, I kind of understand why people went after her on Twitter making threats, but, like, did you really have to do that? Like, you just have to, all you can just say is, like, share your feelings, like, oh, you shouldn't have done that, uh, maybe get counseling just to help Serena, but, like, instead of wishing she's dead or something, like, that's just unacceptable, you know? Yeah, I think so that, um, it's, it's kind of funny, it's kind of funny that Naomi Osaka just did this, the same exact thing that 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 Serena Williams did to her the same thing that she did to this to, to in, in the U.S. Open um, and uh, against uh, Layla Fernandez, it's the same exact thing she did, yeah. and she lost. She lost that match. She uh, uh, Hernandez completely smoked her in in, in 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 that match, and and she just as she smoked Serena Williams, and uh, and, and but they, but you know the funny thing about that. In Japan, they there's an there's an article about that in Japan. They, they said in Japan, this is from Japan Times. This is um, Osaka smashes racket in U.S. Open lots. Said she's considering a break. Um, so that Osaka threw her racket at least three times and was finally hit with a cold violation in the third set when she hit the ball into the stands. She even draped the towel over her head as she took a break following her second set loss. Um, you know, Osaka, Osaka, and Osaka and her, uh, her she she is slowly but surely becoming uh, uh, irrelevant as a tennis player because she's being exposed, and uh, and, and and that's a sad thing to see. She, she's young. She's 23 years old. She won four Grand Slam titles. This woman could go on and become a really great player. And she's playing for Japan, at least, in Japan. And, uh, you know, you know, to see her go out like that, it's, it's just it's sad. But at the same time, it's, it, she should really, you know, she should really, you know, toughen up. And make her mentality stronger because you know she's what the number two. She was a tennis. She was number she one was in the world. world. She was uh, she was world number one for a bit, and then she dropped down. I think because of her early exit, she dropped down to like three or four or five. I don't remember, but yeah, she um, decided to take tennis for a break. She's like uncertain about the future, possibly because of health issues. So yeah, uh, so. It's, yeah, it's 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 just I I don't know I, I don't really I don't really follow tennis so I think that you know Osaka she's trying to now you know she she's still she's still involved in tennis but I see her situation it's the same thing kind of like how Colin Kaepernick the Colin Kaepernick situation where he's protesting social justice she did the exact same thing. And now she's starting to lose her matches. She, she can't focus her mind on tennis because she's she's so distracted as a as an athlete. She doesn't want to focus on right. on her um, you yeah. know craft. You know she doesn't want to improve herself, and, and and so she's getting so distracted by the world around her that she can't focus on what she's what what got her there in the first place, which is her tennis. You know, and she's playing for Japan. Which is, by the way, you know, one of the, you know, it's 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 one of the best countries in the world out there. I don't I don't I don't know, I don't know in, in regards to tennis, but good morning. you know, but they're pretty good at sports, um, especially when it comes to like tennis and soccer. Um, in those sports, because um, I know the tennis, the Japanese, I remember the Japanese, uh, the Japanese um, women's. Soccer team beat the women's U.S. national team in 2016, I believe it was. I don't know 20, 2015. They beat them in the uh, in in the World Cup, and uh, they they became the World Cup champions. 
So, um, yeah. um, you know, let me, yeah, let me stop you for a minute because I actually have a lot of stuff to talk about and it's like 35 minutes. So like, I still want to talk about, so yeah, just finish up what you have to say as much yeah. as possible. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah so, I, so I just wanted to say that, that Osaka, you know, she can't handle questions. Another, another point that I want to make is that Osaka, Osaka, when she, when she starts questions by the, the media, her job, her job as, a, as an athlete is to answer questions from the media and she, she, she's in the spotlight. She's been in the spotlight for years now and she should be able to handle simple questions from the media, answer the questions, move on. Um, instead, she just, she decides to, to instead of moving on, she, she can't handle the questions. She breaks down in front of the camera and she can't handle it. And this is this is not good. This is not a good look for her. It's not a good look for his her her, her management. You know, because when I think yeah. of her, I think of um, Maria Sharpova. You you remember her? Yes. Um, yes, Maria Sharpova. Um, she is she she's a she's a success story. Um, you know you know that her net worth today is um her net worth is one hundred and eighty million dollars way more than Naomi Osaka and um and the way how she got started Naomi Osaka you know she, she she really worked hard to become successful um um I, I was reading an article a little bit about her history and I learned that you know when she was 11 years old she was offered a deal of 70 million dollars um from a, uh, I think it was one, one of the um, athletic brands. And so she decided she was really working alongside one of those athletic brands. And um, she really grew herself as an athlete and, and sports her own wear out at, at her tennis matches. And, um, and, and, and she really, she, 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 she loves to engage herself with her fans and, um, you know, and, and keep them engaged on what she's doing and all that stuff. Um, through, through her social media accounts, but also she does it with her own business. She she launches her own business where, uh, but as but when I look at Naomi Naomi Osaka, I don't really see that 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 same aspect. Yeah. All right. Yes. Yeah, well said.